I wanted to say one more thing about branches this week uh, because there's different ways that we use branches. And so I wanted to show you a concrete example of you know, two of the ways that are most commonly seen. And that is, uh, we're gonna talk a lot about topic branches and also long-lived branches. So I can show you examples of both things inside of the Node.js project. And so I thought I would start there. So um, Node is a, Node's an open source project. It's, it's actually, Node's a great open source project to contribute to. Um, I've had quite a few students who have contributed there in the past. The community is really, really welcoming of new developers. And there's actually a lot that can, that you can do in Node that, um, I don't know, you might think to yourself, well, how am I ever going to contribute to something this big? Like, here's the main, uh, the Node repository. You can see there's 900 open issues, 298 pull requests. Uh, the main, the master branch here has 31,000 <laughs> 31, commits on it. Like, so much has happened there. Um, you've got... 2,800 people who have contributed to it. It's a big, big project. And the project is, you know, written in a mix of JavaScript, C++, Python, etc. So there's like all different languages that you know, you could, you could definitely get involved in it. So another week, I'll show you how to fix a bug in Node maybe, because it's fun. But today what I wanted to do is I just wanted to talk to you about how they use branches. And okay, so let's just take the uh, the main screen you get when you go to Node. And it says, okay, download, you know, if you want to go and download Node, it says you can download version 12.18.4 LTS, or you can download 14.13.0 current. So like what's going on here? They've got multiple versions of the code. <clears throat> How do they manage that? And how do they manage, you know, like like what is actually happening here? So the the way that Node and a lot of other projects that they do their releases is really interesting. And so for you who's studying software, it's a good way for you to see, you know, how do you maintain software over over a long time, long time period? So what happens is, uh, let's just read, I'll take you through this and explain it. So major node versions enter the current release status uh, for six months, which gives library authors time to update, uh, to add support for them. And then after six months, odd numbered releases, so things like nine, 11, 13, they become unsupported and the even numbered releases, 10, 12, uh, 14, they move to active LTS status and are ready for general use. LTS release status is long-term support. So a lot of people think that LTS means latest. It doesn't, it, it, LTS means that this version is gonna be supported for a long period of time and other versions aren't going to be. Um, typically guarantees that critical bugs will be fixed for a total of 30 months. So when you're on a particular version of Node, you can count on one of the even number LTS versions getting security fixes for uh, 30 months. That's really good. So if you're working at a company and you write some piece of production code and you ship it on version 12 of Node, you know that for at least 30 months, you're gonna be okay before you have to really update it. And you also know that the, uh, the Node project is going to um, it's going to deal with critical bugs. So what they're not going to do is change the API so that you, you know, you wake up one morning and your code has, surprise, we've shipped in a whole new API and nothing works. So what does that mean for the way that they do branches? Okay, so we have the master branch and the master branch they listed here as unstable. And then they have Node.js version 10 and you can see that it goes up, like down here, it's a little bit easier to see. It starts uh, into its maintenance period and then when it ends the maintenance period. So version um, version 10 of Node is going to exit uh, LTS or end of life at uh, what April 30th, 2021. And then version 12 in 2022, version 14, 2023, and on and on and on down. Some of these versions haven't been released yet, but you have a sense, like if you're trying to um, look forward and figure out when you're gonna do your updates on stuff like this. So these branches, 
They go into a maintenance mode. So they have a an active development mode for a while, and then they have this maintenance, maintenance mode. So if you think about how the node project is dealing with its code, it's really complicated because you've got the master branch, this branch where all development is happening. So if somebody fixes a bug, they're gonna do it on the master branch. But then what if somebody, like let's say in July, 2022, somebody finds a security bug and they fix the security bug here, but let's say the security bug has been around for a long time. So at that point, the node 14 version is in maintenance mode. So what they would do is they would have to backport that security fix onto the node 14 branch. So this gets really complicated because now you have these parallel versions of node that all have to exist at the same time. And so branches are a really good way to deal with this in Git. So I thought I would show you how this works and how they do what they do. So um, let's, let's, let's take an example. So here is a pull request, just like all the pull requests you've been doing. Now this is a pretty significant sized pull request. This is just under 2000 lines of code being added to 20 different files. And the details of this don't really matter for what we're gonna talk about, but you've got a pretty big change here. Lots and lots of places where things are being expanded. You know, they've, they're changing how a bunch of stuff works deep inside Node. So this goes through a whole process and you can see lots and lots of people get involved in the reviews. So lots of people talk and if we were to expand this, you'll see inside here, there'll be lots of conversation about how do we do this? How do we do that? Let's make these changes to the code. And you know, as, as this happens, um, eventually, you know, the person gets a review and the code can be, the code can be merged. Okay. So let's talk about, let's talk about this as a topic branch. That's what we tend to call these things. So right now there are 298 pull requests here, um, to update documentation, update documentation, update dependencies, all kinds of things. Lots and lots of fixes that are going on. So the project is constantly improving Node.js. And so all of these branches like this one here, for example, um, adding some, you know, a documentation fix. And this one is, you know, like, fairly small change, right? So it's 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 a pretty isolated thing. It gets its own branch. So this, you know, this is the branch name here and uh, they're, they're off on this branch doing a little bit of work and they wanna quickly merge that work back in again. So this is gonna be a, a short-lived branch, which is about a particular topic. So it might be fixing a bug, updating the documentation, uh, improving the build system so that it's faster, whatever it is, uh, it could be anything. But we tend to think about these kinds of branches as being short-lived things that we go off and do some work and then we merge, we merge back in as quickly as we can. These are short-lived branches. Okay, and that's, they can be big, like they can, like this one, for example, um, you know, 2000 lines of code, working on it over a 14 day period. Like that's a pretty pretty significant chunk of work. And so, and then other ones are gonna be smaller, you know, three, three files are changed. And how many lines of, of code changed here? Like eight lines of code being added, seven lines deleted, smaller. Both of them are perfectly appropriate ways to use a uh, to use a topic branch. Now, another kind of branch that they have here is they have these long lived branches. So if you, in GitHub, if you click on the drop down here, you can see all the different branches and you can also see the tags. So remember that a tag is not going to move. So when you tag version 14.8.0, it is that commit forever. Whereas a branch, can move. So the master branch is the one that we're on right now. It was last updated. There's 31,000. Uh, if I click on this, you can see 31,000 commits. The last one was October 1st, uh, five hours ago. 
So if we take a look at other branches in here, we can see that there are other branches here. For example, there is the V10 branch. And you can see that this branch was last updated 2016. Or if we take a look at V12, right? So these are old, old versions of Node. If I go forward and I look at, say, the version 12 branch, you'll see that this was up updated September 15th, and this is the this is the commit that was happening here. So I also I have this uh, same uh, view that I showed you last time. So here I'm, I've got the um, source tree view of the Node Node project. And what you can see here is you can see that this is the this is the master branch where it is here. But in parallel to the master branch, over here on the left, I have other branches that go off in different directions. And look at all these things that are sitting on, like if I go all the way up, what is this branch? So here you've got the version 12 branch. So lots and lots of things have landed on the version 12 branch and it's moving off in this different direction. Or if I scroll down, I could find other branch. Let's just, actually, it'll be faster if I do it this way. If I take a look at branches, this is so big that getting it to show me all these branches is a bit tricky. So where is it? It can't even handle, there's too many commits in here for, okay, here we go. So here's master. If I scroll down, you'll see that there's another parallel branch for version 14. And if I scroll down, I'll find more branches down here. So you'll see that at any given time, there's these multiple branches that all live in parallel inside the Git repository. And so what happens is uh, these branches, like you'll notice, for example, that not only is there a v12x branch, but there's a v12x staging branch. So the staging branch is a place for them to try merging things that are going to land on the 12 branch, but they can try doing it on this branch and see how it goes to do further testing and everything. And then they can merge that onto the 12, uh, 12x branch in order to push that out. So they Node uses these long lived branches as a way of being able to do this complex set of security releases between all the different um, branches. Like you can see this PR, let me go back here, this PR right here that I just showed you, not only did it land on, let's see where they landed it. You can see it landing, for example, on 14.13.0, um, like they're landing it here on different branches, but you can also see that they've decided to backport it to the 12x branch. So they have another pull request here, which backports the same feature from this other into back into 12x. So these branches are all happening at the same time, and sometimes we want a branch to live only for um, a very short period. And other times we're trying to have branches that'll live for a longer period. The way that Node does it is much more complicated than what you're gonna be doing in your uh, your projects you know, to begin with. But it's neat to see this style of work because if you ever wanna have parallel versions of code and you wanna be able to keep them alive at the same time, um, this is one way, one way to achieve it, to have these parallel branches and, and land merge different things onto different branches as we go. In order to do the technique that they're using here, we're, I'm gonna have to teach you something called cherry picking as a way of picking commits off of one branch and putting them onto another, which we'll come back to in another, in another discussion. But I wanted to show you this when we're talking about topic branches and we're talking about long-lived branches and some of the different ways that projects use them.